Hayoma was an always angry grown-ass baby who got paired with Nagatsuki Boten, a host to the very monsters that put a permanent scowl on his ugly face. Now he must navigate a marriage proposal that threatens his virginity, befriend the monsters called Tsukumogamis while also fighting off enemies before he is fit to seek his revenge. Hayoma stands frozen by fear as his siblings, who have just been stabbed by a Tsukumogami, tell him to run before he is killed too. But he doesn't move. So with her last strength, his sister pushes him away. Two thousand years later. Years later, he is standing before a Maribito, an entity from the land of the dead, which found its way to the land of the living in the form of Tsukumogami. On the other side of town, his grandfather sends another one back to its realm. The man turns to his audience of two policemen and tells the younger one he just witnessed something that's hidden from the general public. But he is unimpressed by it. His older colleague tells him the man, Kunato-san, is part of the Sainome, people entrusted by the government to combat the Marabito. The police officer asks Kunato about his grandson, and he says that he is taking care of the other Marabito. Kunto-san says he is sure his Hyoma is settling things with as little force as possible. Meanwhile, Hyoma is actually acting like Serena Williams hitting the Marabito soccer practice. Back at their home, Kunato queries Hyoma about his violent method of sending the Marabito back to its realm, but he says he felt it was the best course of action. Kunato says using force should be their last resort, because the Marabito are usually dragged out of their realm against their will, and it is the job of a Sename to guide them back, but Hayoma is like a loose cannon, always attacking them. Hayoma still maintains his ground, saying he believes the creatures can turn on a person quickly, with reference to what happened to his siblings all those years ago. His grandfather says he thought Hayoma would grow past his hatred for Tsukumogami, but since he hasn't, he'll be sent away to live with a family of Tsukumogami under the pretense of monitoring them so he doesn't end up self-destructing. A true Fresh Prince of Bel-Air moment. The next day, Hayoma arrives in Kyoto, greeted by Hairo and Kushige. He asks after Boten, the housemaster, but she is away. The others arrive, so Hyoma announces that he doesn't like them and doesn't care to work with them. Nagi laughs on hearing this, telling him to get his head out of his bum because they really don't care about him and that not everything is about him. Hyoma says he thinks they're using Boten, which angers Nagi, but he refuses to take it back and they charge at each other. They fight, matching each other's energy. The others see that Boten is coming home so they interfere and break up the fight, unintentionally knocking Hyoma out just as Boten arrives. Inside the house, Boten tries to apologize for the behavior of her family, but Hyoma refuses the apology, saying he acted provocatively. She is frightened by how angry he looks, but Hiro says she thinks his face is just permanently frowning like the Grinch. Boten goes back to addressing him telling him he is welcome at their home as long as he follows their rules and regulations. Hyoma thinks Button isn't leader material, but then he changes his mind a little after seeing her punishment for Nagi's misbehavior is leaving him hanging outside in the sun like a wet cloth. Hyoma apologizes to Boten for not properly explaining what a Sainame is, then tells her they are humans empowered by Senokami, the guardian god of the border between the lands of the living and dead. He says he'd like to give his opinion on her arrangement with Boten's Tsukumogami family, stating they're dangerous monsters who can turn on her at any point. This makes her angry, so she says she'll only let him stay for three days, and if he doesn't change his behavior, she'll kick him out. After Bolton leaves him questioning his entire thought process, Nagi comes into the room to tell him he'd like to work together. Nagi takes Hyoma out to hunt down other Tsukumogami, finding one attacking a storekeeper and quickly sending it back to its realm. On their way home, Hayoma tells Nagi about how his siblings died. While the Tsukumogami is still out in their world, he will not stop till he finds and kills it. The next morning, Boten announces breakfast is ready to Hayoma while he trains with single-minded determination, and he tells her he'll join after reaching his goals. After breakfast, Boten notices the signatory board on the wall. Hiro tells her he suggested that if Hyoma gets all seven of their signatures, he'll be allowed to stay, and he is going out on a job with Suzuri and Kagami later that day. Later, when Hyoma and Suzuri are out together, Suzuri acts like a creep talking to women while Hyoma spots a Tsukumogami. 
Hayoma is angered by their unseriousness because even Kagami is somewhere stuffing her face with food like it's a mukbang. <laughs> Hayoma challenges them for trying to act human, and they tell him it's because they care about stuff like that, so he should stop being quick to judge them negatively. Suzuri tells him to follow them to their target, Tsukumogami, for a final evaluation as it's looking to live among humans. They enter a room where Suzuri introduces everyone to Yegen the Tsukumogami. Then he starts the interview. Suzuri asks why Yegen chooses to stay in the human world, and she says it's because she feels safe. Suzuri says that's valid, then he asks Kagami to check if Yagen has used her powers for evil, and she passes. It's all ending well until Hayoma mentions they are from the Nagatsuki household, and Yagen attacks Suzuri, prompting Hayoma to attack back, almost sending her away if not for Kagami's pleas. Suzuri reforms and takes Yagen away to convince her they mean no harm. Back at the Nagatsuki household, Hayoma goes back to his training goals like a clock working overtime, and he rejects the hot bath Boten offers, telling her he can't indulge till he's done, which makes her note for the umpteenth time that he is uptight while Kagami and Suzuri give him their approval to stay. Hayoma dreams about visiting his sibling's grave, then wakes with a start. Somewhere in town, a group of Tsukumogami decides to hunt and kill the Nagatsuki to show them they have no power. Back at their house, Boten goes to the bathroom to thank Hyoma for saving Kagami's life the day before. She starts to tell him the ultimatum is lifted, but he cuts her off, saying he wants it to stand. Yugi, Kagami and Suzuri discuss Hayoma's fate if Yu doesn't approve as they walk on a bridge outside. Yugi says the two of them aren't much different character-wise. Hayoma goes to meet Yu for a job only to get there after she has finished. Yu tells him she despises him because she sees the hatred he has for them in his eyes, and he made her mistress cry. She tells him he should either give up on getting her signature or fight her for it. As she attacks him, the gang of stray Tsukumogami picks up on her energy, and so does her family, so they all go to the scene of the fight. Hayoma runs while Yu attacks him with her pins, urging him to stop being a wimp and fight back, but he refuses, saying he was sent to them so he could stop resorting to violence all the time. Hayoma tells Yu that in the past two days he'd noticed there was something truly different about the Nagatsuki, and therefore he refuses to fight her until it's needed. Just as she gives up, Hayoma says he noticed Yu loves Boten, and this truth turns her into an uncontrollable bomb as she throws a pin at him. Just then, the stray Tsukumogami appear, and so do the other Nagatsuki. Hikaki, the kung fu panda-looking leader of the Tsukumogami, announces that they'll crush all the Nagatsuki, but Yugi is more interested in where Hayoma is. Yu points to where he is wrapped like sushi by her, and Hikaki decides he'll kill Hayoma first, calling on his peers to attack with him, and a full-blown fight starts. Yugi asks Hikaki if he and his comrades have killed humans before, and he confirms they have, but have long become bored of it. On hearing this, Hioma stops being the damsel in distress wrapped like sushi and extracts himself, shocking everyone. He slashes the Tsukumogami charging at him with one strike, angry that the gang has killed humans before. Hikaki teases him, saying he's just like them, bloodthirsty, and Hyoma doesn't hesitate to agree, saying this time, he won't let his siblings down, destroying the Tsukumogami in one blow. From a distance, Hiro and Kushige watch, noting the darkness his grandfather talked about. Hiro says she believes he can change and help them save Boten too. Hyoma is in his room, meditating on his next line of action, with his stay in the Nagatsuki household solidified by Yu's signature, when Boten barges in, asking if it's true he got all the signatures. Hayoma confirms it and apologizes for his initial bad behavior, while Botan laughs at how serious he always is. Botan is an eager beaver telling Hayoma their rules and how things work when Hiro calls on them to tell them that one of the conditions for taking in Hayoma was that they would also evaluate Hayoma on whether or not he is a suitable husband for Botan. They open a room supposedly dedicated to the cause, leaving Botan looking red, like she ate raw peppers. Her words are like those of a drunkard, as she tries to tell him that it's a prank and Hayoma shouldn't mind them, but her family declare they are serious and ask Hayoma if he accepts their proposal. The young man tells them he thinks it's too early to reject or accept their offer, 
so he'll wait till he has properly assessed the household to give an answer. Then he asks Botan if he can go for his Wednesday run, to which she agrees. When he leaves, Botan starts screeching like a busted radio, <laughs> whining that they've made things awkward. Hiro tells her not to worry too much, as it'll make them anxious. On Hayoma's part, the moment he steps out of the house, he loses his cool and turns red. Inside the house, Botan freaks out while Hiro and Kushiga spy on her, and Kushiga tells Hiro it's time for them to go out. Botan suddenly decides to find Hayoma, apologize for everything, and tell him to forget about the proposal after she goes shopping. Later, Hayoma calls his grandfather to talk about the marriage proposal, giving theories as to why he is being made to consider it, including everything but the possibility of it being just an arranged marriage. He says it's a sort of psychological training, but Kunato says he is simply worried that his grandson is 21 and a total monk, so Hayoma hangs up. He goes looking for Hiro so they can talk, but Suruzi tells him she's out with Kushige. He asks after Yu and Nagi, but again, he is told they are out, but this time killing the rest of Hikaki's gang. Hayoma's face turns beet red with rage when he hears about the mission because denying him the chance to join the fight was like taking candy out of his mouth. Before he could lash out, Botan appears, heading out to shop. She goes up to him to tell him he shouldn't worry about the proposal earlier, as she knows it must be a huge bother, and Hayoma says it is really a huge bother, and he hasn't given it a moment's concern. This takes Botan aback, but she acts cool, leaving him. Surusi and Kagami appear before Hayoma once she leaves, telling him off for being so cold towards their mistress. As Botan walks to the mall, she wonders why Hioma's rejection bothers her so much. Just then, a Tsukumagami looking like Mr. Smiggle waylays her, asking her to come along with him, but she runs, although it's useless because he catches her. As the Tsukumagami is about to pick Botan up, Hayoma appears, cutting off his hands, just as you and Nagi appear too quickly, eliminating the threat and almost eliminating Hayomi too in the process. After they're done with the Tsukumagami, Hayoma asks Nagi if he was aiming to knock him out, but he denies it and then apologizes. Nagi proceeds to drag you away from Botan, so they can finish sending the decoys back to their realm, leaving the two humans alone. Botan thanks Hyoma for saving her, then asks what he was doing looking for her. He shyly apologizes for his demeanor earlier, telling her he wasn't trying to hurt her feelings, and like the idiot he is, he fails to communicate his feelings properly. Botan saves him from sounding retarded by cutting in that she understands that they both have meddling relatives. Nagi is yelling at Hayoma while chasing him around the house early in the morning like Tom and Jerry. This wakes a grumpy Suzuri up, who sticks his head outside his room yelling for them to stop being cat and rat. When Nagi sees him, he tells him to help put a stop to Hayoma's stupidity, to which Hayoma counters that he's just trying to protect Botan after the last attack by putting a talisman designed to paralyze most Tsukumogami around town. Nagi says his IQ is in the minus because the talisman affects humans too, and Kagami already put a protective barrier around the house. Hayoma says nobody informed him and starts running again, while Nagi follows, intent on hitting him for setting the talismans outside. Kushige and Hairo meet Kunato outside a door, exchanging greetings, then they focus on meeting Kai, the cynical bastard who invited them all. Kai sends a surprise attack at them as a way of saying hello, but Kunato quickly deflects it, exclaiming that Kai should find a better way to greet his guests. Kai, one of the original Tsukumogami, a suit of armor originating from as far back as the Edo period, was locked up by the Senome for fear of his power behind a barrier created by the shrine's fence, Itsuki. In exchange for his cooperation, the Senome elders agreed he could turn any Senome into his toys and Kai tells the ones before him that he intends to keep them with him for a few days. Back at the Nagatsuki residence, Hayoma is going around trying to gather all the talismans he left outside so it doesn't affect Botan. He wonders if there's something special about Botan that requires protection beyond what he knows, then spots one of the talismans. Back in Kai's prison, he talks about the unwritten rule, don't make use of Nagatsuki Botan because of the potential inside of her. He tells them they should be held accountable for anything that happens, but he's happy to watch everything unfold as his very own reality TV. 
Hayoma notices the talisman he put was activated and overridden, then two Tsukumogami appear ready to attack him. In another part of the city, Yu finds talismans and tries to contact her counterparts, who tell her it was Hayoma's doing, and she should look out for more. Meanwhile, Hiro drops like a fly alongside her colleagues after failing to stay awake in front of Kai. Kai calls for recess, and Itsuki tells him he should interview them more about Hayoma because she feels they're holding something back. He agrees, okay. telling her he has time and intends to use it to gather all the information while instructing her to set up a network to watch Hayoma. On his own part, Hayoma is faced with two very powerful Tsukumogami, but he throws them off by telling them he's from the government office. They are dim-witted enough to buy it for a second before they realize normal people don't know anything about talismans, so they start to fight. Hayoma quickly discovers that bluffing his way out of a fight with powerful Tsukumogami is a lot harder than it looks on TV. On the other side of the town, Yu finds a talisman activated, and she tries to reach her comrades but fails. Hayoma is cornered by the Tsukumogami, and they ask him to tell them everything, but he refuses to sell out the Nagatsuki household. They tell him they are more interested in knowing about him, his reasons for entering the Nagatsuki household, and his intentions for Botan's power. Hayoma, in his typical slow manner, tells them he knows they're using psychological warfare and insists he won't let them get to Botan. Yu appears at the scene of the fight, telling them to leave Hayoma alone as he's in the household solely for training. The senior Tsukumogami leaves, and Hayoma decides something is fishy, so he must learn more about Botan. Haori calls out to Hayoma, who's standing at a corner outside, and he looks up, jaw to the ground, when he sees how fine she looks. She tells him he should have dressed up differently because he was posing as her boyfriend and going on a date with her for the day. She tries to hold his hand, but he turns to pudding at a single touch. Earlier in the day, Hiro returned to the Nagatsuki household, asking Kagami if anything unusual had happened in her absence and Kagami told her Hyoma had been questioned by Aoji the day before. At that moment, Hyoma storms out to where Botan stands, asking her if she'd go on a date with him in the most unromantic way. Botan Palm strikes the creep away from her, announcing she was going to school to hand in an assignment before rushing out. At the dining table, Hyoma asks why the Tsukumogami called Botan a Yorimashi, saying he must know in order to protect her. Haori tells him to prepare for an outing, and that's how they end up on a date trailing Botan. Haori tells him the purpose of following Botan is to give him a glimpse into the girl's life. She tells him that Kushige's barrier consists of the Nagatsuki estate and the outside world. In the outside world, Botan is plagued by Tsukumogami watching her every move, and she is aware of it. Hayoma starts to protest, but Haori tells him he must accept this reality before he can be allowed to know more, so he concedes as it correlates with what Ayoji said. He asks Huari if the Nagatsuki Tsukumogamis really have pure intentions for Botan, and this makes her recall when Botan was a little girl and how she used to be ostracized by her peers because of the looming presence around her. Huari swears their closeness to Botan is innocent, relating how for the first three years of the child's life, she was locked in the estate until the law that she was not to be touched was passed, and even then, she was without friends. They all developed parental love for her, and Hayoma had no idea how real their love for her was, so he wasn't allowed to ask them any more questions about their intentions. Hayoma vows to protect Botan, then Huari calls out to Kagami that she thinks he took everything rather well, making the creepy Nagatsuki to come out of her hiding place head bowed. Kagami says she was afraid Hayoma would do something insensitive again, but he proves her wrong which explains why he's a good fit as a husband for Botan. Hayoma becomes a shy dweeb on hearing this, failing to form a coherent sentence while the two Nagatsuka laugh at him. Suddenly, Botan appears, asking them what they are doing, and Hori goes over to her, trying to convince the girl they were having a get-together. Hayoma uses this opportunity to ask Kagami about Botan's relatives, and he is told that they are dead. On their way home, Hori admits to Botan what they were actually doing, which makes her start acting like a newborn Pikachu caught in headlights. Hauri tells her it was necessary because Hayoma was curious, plus she did a palm strike on him, so she starts apologizing to Hayoma for her actions, 
but he tells her he understands and also admires her strength in carrying on with life joyfully despite her issues. It's snowing outside, so Kagami is clearing the frontage of the Nagatsuki household of snow as Botan comes out on her way to college. She thanks Kagami for doing the work and is about to leave when Hayoma comes out too, wearing clothes unfit for the cold weather. Botan tells him he should change to something more warm, but he starts acting like Sheldon on steroids, talking about how the extreme weather is perfect for psychological training. Botan doesn't buy this idea, so she gives him money to buy warm clothes, and he takes it running like Sonic Hedgehog to the stores. She leaves for school too, leaving Kagami to shovel her snow, when suddenly, Aoji appears. What? Kagami gives Aoji some tea inside the house, leaving him to talk to Suzuri, who asks him why he's in their house. Aoji tells him he's there to deliver a message from one of the people unsatisfied with the explanation he offered about Hayoma's presence in their household. He tells them it's the protectors of Kyoto, the Kadamori, a group of Sonome watching over that region and calling them out, then he leaves. Outside, Aoji recalls one encounter he didn't tell Suzuri about. A strange woman asked about what he learned from his investigation into Hayoma, then disappeared when he refused to say anything. Hayoma dresses up differently the moment he hears their meeting with Kadamori, ready to receive formal permission to operate in Kyoto. When he gets to the Kadamori residence, he is greeted by the cholesterol ambassador head of the clan, who says Hayoma might have taken his time to come, but he wouldn't hold it over him. Inside their compound, Hayoma sees a Tsukumogami tied up with two Senomi at his side. The old man explains that it's a bell to attract other Tsukumogami, and he is welcome to watch them work. Kadomori sits down, offering Hayoma a seat too, but he turns it down, noticing the female Sonome sitting not far from them. Kadomori tells him their method of catching Tsukumogami involves using talismans to disable them, then sealing them away. He explains they need more manpower, so he is allowed to do official Senomi duties, although he has to report back once in a while, and he also has questions about the Nagatsuki household. Kadomori asks him if he is truly just observing the Nagatsukis, to which Hayoma asks back what he thinks of the household. The old man says he sees it as monsters living amongst monsters as a family because when Botan's Marabito finally awakens, there's no telling the damage she would do taking ownership of such power, and if not for the wall around her, they would have killed her long ago. Kadamori says that since he's made it inside the wall, he wants Hayoma to seal Botan away, but Hayoma immediately refuses. He says he considers himself a protector of humans, so therefore, he can't hurt one, and he also has a fondness for the Nagatsuki family. Kadamori decides to attack him in a bid to scare him, but Hayoma is ready to fight, and so they start fighting. They call out Tsukumogami controlled by talismans to beat up Hayoma, but he is unshaken. He is like the Joker, excited by violence taking them head-on to the surprise of Kadamori and his brethren. Nugi tells Suruzi that Hayoma's first real fight was at 12 when he ran away from home to hunt a very powerful Tsukumogami Onigawara of U, which he successfully destroyed at 18. Nugi says Hayoma is very strong, and his comment is confirmed as Hayoma over at the Kodoromi residence destroys the last Tsukumogami sent at him, asking if the head of the clan has any more for him. The old man calls out one more Tsukumogami, which turns out to be Yagen, shocking him. She launches at him but he is unwilling to take her out, remembering how she was so eager to stay in the human world in their first encounter. Kodoromi notes this as his weakness, thinking he now has a soft spot for Tsukumogami. Hyoma knocks Yegan out and still manages the talisman thrown at him, quickly knocking the other Seinomi out, too surprising Kodoromi. The obese man notices Hyoma also saved Yagen. Instead of knocking her out, he cut off the talisman binding her. Kodoromi asks why Hayoma saved her, and the young Seinome says it was instinct, which sends the girl in the corner into a laughing fit. Tsubaki tells her father to stand down, but he asks her to stay out of it, making her do a formation talisman, warning her father he doesn't want her to take Hayoma's side, so he concedes. Kodoromi tells Hayoma he passed the test of his power and lets him take custody of Yagen. Tsubaki gives him her card and flirts with him before leaving with her family. Hayoma takes Yegen with him to the chaotic Nagatsuki residence, but she freaks out, so he has to calm her down. 
He walks into the house, and Bolton is dismayed when she sees how wrecked he looks, rushing to get a first aid box, while Hioma stands there staring like a retard. When he sees she is uncomfortable with his stares, he says her face just puts him at ease, dishing out the pickup line without realizing it, because his brain processes those things with a 500 megabyte processor. Boten blushes hard, while Hayoma calls out to Yagen to come in too. He asks Boten if Yagen can stay the night, but she seems jealous. In the morning, Boten goes to greet Hairo, who's taking care of Kushige, when Hayoma comes out, with Yagen announcing they're heading out. Hairo tells Boten to go out with them because she doesn't want Hayoma going out alone with a beautiful woman, even though he is closer to being a monk than having any girlfriend. Hayoma asks Boten to come along too, but she's hesitant until Yagen asks because she's afraid of Hayoma's permanent downward-facing face. They all walk side by side as Yagen tells them about her reason for the destination. She tells them it is one she holds strong memories of because she feels like in her past life as an object, she spent a great deal of time there. They get to the place with Yagen telling them she wishes for closure on the feelings she has for her former master and the location thanking him for giving her comfort even centuries later. Yagen says she's done and she'd hate to take up more of the happy couple's time. The statement makes both of them react like reindeer caught in headlights and they both start denying it. At the airport, Hayoma-san hands Yegen over to the Seinomes that came to take her to their territory, asking them to take care of her while Botan watches curiously. Yegen parts with them, but not before telling Hayoma to protect Botan, because she senses her power and is sure others do too. Botan and Hayoma head back to the house, while Botan expresses her gratitude to Hioma for helping her learn a lot in the few weeks he has been around. He tells her he feels the same because, once upon a time, he sealed Marabitos on sight. Botan asks why he hates the creatures, then Hayoma relates the story of his siblings' deaths, telling her he now sees that not all Tsukumogami are like that, and Botan concurs, saying he has truly changed from when he first arrived. They find mutual comfort in each other as the Nagasakis watch from a distance, with you finding displeasure in the fact they're getting along well. Kodoromi and his men are at the site where some of their Sonome were tortured, almost to the brink of death, examining the place for clues as to who did it. To the conclusion that it was the Sogenbis declaring war on them. At the Nagasaki household, Boten tells Hayoma to come home safely because she's tired of tending to his wounds. Their interactions infuriate you, and she behaves like a scorned, jealous wife, throwing a fit. You and Hyoma leave to meet with the Kodoromi clan as she tells Hayoma about how four years ago Kodoromi declared war on the dangerous Tsukumogami gang, Sogenbi, and defeated them, leaving only three surviving leaders who were out for revenge. They arrive at their meeting place and Tsubaki becomes a loose cannon launching herself at Hayoma on sight. This upsets him, but Tsubaki just asks why he didn't text her after she gave him her number. Hayoma says he has his reason while looking at you, who's watching them seemingly uninterested until she says she'll make sure to tell Boten he is a girl magnet. Yu gets off him apologizing, and then she greets Yu, surprising Hioma. Yu turns to him, saying the only surprise is how cozy he and Tsubaki are. She says it makes sense if they get together, because it'll be an alliance between the two households. Hioma loses his tongue trying to deny it, but Yu brushes him off, looking for the others. They spot Ayoji and Uchiki sitting on a bench not far from them, Ayogi tells them he's there only as a guide to their targets, while Kodoromi is setting up a network of talismans around town to make sure Kyoto is well guarded. He takes the crew straight to the Sogenbi's old hideout, which makes Hayoma suspicious. But because he's dim-witted, he sees it as an outcome of effectiveness when, in reality, it's because the law of connivance allows bad guys to go free under supervision, as long as they promise not to cause major trouble in order to catch smaller criminals under them. Aoji turns to leave, but he is attacked by a member of the gang as the rest come out simultaneously, and Aoji is luckily saved by Uchiki. Hikikiri Sogenbi's leader, another eyesore of Atsukumogami, addresses them from a rooftop, telling them that although the Sename from the night before refused to talk, he'll make them talk. Hioma asks them why they were killing humans, and Hikikiri says it's just because they can. Aoji tries to run, but Tsubaki turns him into her puppet with a talisman, 
and he starts to fight. The others start fighting too, but Aoji still tries to break free and run until his opponent, Shimoto, calls him out for the spineless coward he is, and he gets the balls to attack back alongside Uchiki. Hioma and Yu find it hard to pin Hikikiri down, as he's a well-experienced opponent. Hikikiri becomes cocky, <laughs> cornering Hioma, but he doesn't back down. The others finish off the lesser Sogenbi and face Hikikiri, with Yu binding an entire building to use as a bat to swat him, while Hioma comes from behind, finally killing the stubborn Tsukumogami. Instead of celebrating their victory, Yu turns into a mumzilla, telling off Hioma for putting himself in harm's way, despite Botan telling him not to. Hikikiri's remains lay before Kuroromi, who tells him he is a worthless scrap, and he shouldn't have ever given him a chance before casting him away. The Seinomes and Nagasakis all stand around the scene of their just-finished mission. Hayoma asks Tsubaki why she said she was after the umbrella Tsukumogami who killed his siblings, and she tells him it's because when she was younger, they trained together, and she loved them. She asks Hayoma if they can work together to finally find and kill the perpetrator. Yu thinks it's a bad idea that Hayoma would be too blind to reject, but he shocks her by not taking the offer. On their way home, Yu tells Hayoma that he overdoes things, but he disagrees because that's how he always is. He asks why they were all shocked, and Yu says it's because the offer was beyond tempting. He tells her his goal is to destroy the umbrella Tsukumogami himself, no matter what. When they get home, Boten blows up when she sees how injured Hyoma is. Later, Haori calls a meeting to address them about the celebration of Hyoma's third month in the household by making a hot pot. She assigns each of them duties to do in preparation for the celebration before calling Boten aside to tell her she should make the best of her alone time with Hyoma by making a move on him. Haori gives Botan a cheat sheet for love, which she holds onto till she's alone with Hayoma, as she wonders if he has been with anyone before. Botan is like a giraffe on roller skates around Hayoma, flustered by his every move, and when he goes to tell her to rest, the love cheat sheet falls from her pocket when she stands up. Hayoma notices it immediately, calling her attention to it while reading the ridiculous things on it. Botan tells him it was Haori's doing, and he tells him to forget about it, facing away from her. Botan is stung by his coldness until she notices a slight blush from his side view, so she demands to see his face, but instead he starts talking like Sherlock Holmes in 1840, and this gives out the fact that he really is flustered to Botan. Botan charges at him, trying to see his face, but instead ends up on top of him, dry humping him and turning the shade of tomatoes. They hold eye contact for a while until Hyoma asks Botan to get off him, just as Yu walks in with a Darth Vader stare, yelling at Hyoma before wrapping him up in her pin like a dumpling. Yu carries him out, passing their neighbor who was playing a game with Kushiga, and when she mentions the hot pot, their neighbor tells them it's with him. Later that night, they all gather in the dining room to feast, while Hyoma remains in awe of how well accustomed the Nagasakis are to human ways. They urge him to join them in drinking, then a drunk Botan passes out on him, prompting the others to tease him so much that he turns into the Flash, running away to get her water. When she's sobered up, they sit outside, and Botan apologizes about everything. But Hayoma tells her it's fine because it's normal for big sisters like Haori to meddle, because his own sister used to do the same when she was alive. He tells Botan she has a fine family. Botan wakes up to see everyone passed out around the dining area and her hairpin, the only thing she has from her late mother, on the floor, so she picks it up. Later, she and Hayoma go out to take a compatibility test so he can pick up his clothes. They meet Tsubaki there, who doesn't know the concept of personal space the way she pushes up to Hayoma. Batten asks how they know each other, so Hayoma tells her it's from their missions together. Then Tsubaki asks if Botan is Hayoma's girlfriend, but she says no. They go upstairs, and when Tsubaki opens the door, some fabric comes flying out, wrapping Botan up. Atsukumogami called Hata comes out, apologizing for the clothes' misbehavior, as it has a life of its own. Hata starts fusing over Botan when he realizes who she is, but this displeases Tsubaki, who tells him to focus on his customers. When Hayoma hears that the clothes are made by Tsukumogami, he turns into a badly built Lego, breaking down at the thought of wearing the clothes. 
Hata tries to convince him that it was only made by him. Suddenly, Hayoma unfreezes, deciding to take the challenge and wear the garments. Hayoma starts to fight the garment to ascertain dominance over it, which he does successfully, surprising even himself. As they head home, Hayoma asks why Boten seems tired, and she remembers when he was changing, leaving her alone with Tsubaki. The girl called Hayoma cute, and she went into grizzly bear mode, but she doesn't tell him this. At Kadamori's office, Tsubaki reported back everything that transpired to her father, including Boten's presence and her close-knit relationship with Hayoma, which disturbed the old man. Boten takes Hayoma to her college to help set up the signage for her club she created. After he's done, her friends tease him about his Darth Vader stare, <laughs> which makes him frown even more before he starts to leave. Outside the college, a Rizla Suzuri attempts to woo girls, while Nagi tells him off for being a retard. They banter a little before noticing a strange girl who Nagi realizes is Itsuki, Kai's companion on the roof, but before Nagi can get to her, the girl casts a barrier to separate an unsuspecting Hayoma from the rest of his reality. Hayoma is confused, but Kai appears telling him he was summoned for battle and that no one would interrupt their battle. He tells Hayoma to show him the courage he hears so much about, and they start to fight, but he is no match for Kai, and the Nagasakis are faced with Itsuki in the outside world. Kai tells Hayoma he is no better than a donkey on the battlefield, which is disappointing given his reputation, and he can't believe he expected to slay the Umbrella Tsukumagami in that state. He asks Kai if he knows the Umbrella Tsukumagami, and he says he knows everything but refuses to tell the wimp. This provokes Hayoma, but he is like a coffee machine in battle. Luckily, Nagi arrives with Itsuki in hand to throw off Kai. Nagi successfully disarms Kai, while Hayoma hangs on one of the armor's swords like a sack of rice. Inside the college, an oblivious Botan listens to her human friends be airheads over boys till she gets tired and kicks them out of the club meeting room. Outside the college, Kai has accepted defeat in exchange for Itsuki. He tells them he couldn't resist the opportunity to see Hayoma himself, so he asked for permission. Hayoma asks what Kai knows about the umbrella Tsukumogami, but Kai says he doesn't find him worthy of such information and he is a weakling hiding behind his siblings' old weapons instead of using his own. Nagi tells Kai to stop being cruel, but the old Tsukumogami says he isn't the only cruel one because they keep Hayoma near Botan, knowing that as long as he's near her, he'll always attempt to protect her when she is the one who activated the paper umbrella that killed Hayoma's siblings. Kai's time goes up and he returns to being a tied-up goat. Hyoma tells the Nagasakis he'd like some time alone, so they let him go, and they're unaware that Boten is in a corner, eavesdropping. Four days pass without Hyoma returning to the Nagasaki residence while Boten broods over it. She decides to go to Kodoromi for help with information about the paper umbrella incident, and she turns out not to be the monster Kodoromi pinned her to be. The old man asks her why she's in search of answers, and laughs when he sees she's flustered, because he assumes it's because she has feelings for Hyoma. Boten tells the old man that Hayoma ran off and hasn't returned back. This surprises him and his daughter because Hayoma had been training with them all those days. Hayoma comes into the room like a robot waiting for commands, and Kodoromi sends him home. Once he leaves, Kodoromi asks his daughter Subaki if she likes Hayoma because she seemed sad at his departure, but the girl has Harley Quinn tendencies, so she deflects violently. As they walk home, Bolton tells Hayoma she was worried he'd never come back because of what Kai said, but he tells her the only reason he left is because he learned he was weak from his battle with Kai and he needed to train if he was serious about his goals. Bolton tells him that she admires him, opening up to him about the childhood encounter she had that led to her losing trust in people. One of her relatives took her in but intended to use her, but her father's sister rescued her and they lived quietly together for a while until the man came back killing Satuski and ruining her quiet life. She tells him she's afraid of trusting people, but she's grateful he's been extremely kind to her. Hayoma surprises her by asking her to trust him, because he will not betray her or die but will keep her safe. Hayoma stops being a robot, smiling, and this excites Boten so much that she points it out, but he goes back to frowning and walks away from her as she tries to catch up.